it's me, Macy, again, here to show you guys um, what I've come up with for the March project for our Facebook group, and that is to make stickers using the print then cut feature in Cricut Design Space. I make stickers. This is probably the second most frequent thing I do with my Cricut because I sell homemade candles, and I all the time use this feature to make labels for my candles. So I'm going to show you guys, obviously not how to make candle labels, but just how to make stickers in general. I'm going to show you how to make um, planner stickers because I find that's a common thing people use. And then I'm also going to make a couple of regular old stickers. Of course, you don't have to do exactly as I'm doing. Just kind of make whatever type of sticker you want and whatever suits you. I'm just going to use those as examples because I'll make a good tutorial. So the first thing I want to share with you is a really cool resource that I use to get inspiration from. And that is this website right here called Unsplash. Unsplash.com has tons of photos and they are free high resolution photos as you can see right here, which is super awesome. You can use them how you wish um, and they're just completely free and they're great quality photos. So sometimes I scroll through here and by sometimes I mean all the time and many of the crafts and hobbies I do just looking for inspiration. Um, whether that be I see a photo and I like the colors in it, like the color palette of a photo like this, I really like the colors that are in that photo, or I see something for stickers, for example, that would make a good background, like this photo. I could throw some text on there and it'd be a beautiful sticker. So I highly recommend um, using this website all the time, honestly, but if you want to make a sticker but you don't really have any inspiration, I recommend going to unsplash.com, browsing through some of their photos. You can search all kinds of stuff. Um, and there's all these different categories. These textures and patterns, they work really well if you're trying to make just kind of a plain sticker for your planner or something with throwing some text on it. They just have a lot of good, as it says, textures or patterns in the background and it makes for beautiful, beautiful backgrounds for stickers and stuff. So that's what I do and that's what I'm going to do or show you guys that I did for this project. I found a picture I liked. I searched floral or flowers or something for a background. I want to use this photo right here for one of the stickers I'm going to make. So if you guys like this photo and want to use the same thing, it is by Annie Spratt, so you can search her name and find it there. Maybe if I click info, it'll show you some other stuff. Okay, it doesn't really help you guys, but um, if you can't find it and you want this photo for any reason, let me know. I'll send you a direct link. It's in my like, so it's super easy for me to find. But that's what I'm going to use. So you're going to go ahead and save or download this photo. I've already done that, so I'm not going to show you this part. And it's different um, for different browsers. And then you're going to come into Cricut Design Space and upload it. So yeah, you're going to come in here. I've already uploaded the image, so I'm going to go ahead and insert that into Design Space. And then, like I said, I'm going to make some planner stickers. I have an Erin Condren planner. And I love to use this website right here. I will post the link to this if any of you guys... Well, I'll post it anyway in case anybody like me loves planners. Um, I'm an Erin Condren gal, but this also has like Happy Planner. I think the other common ones, yep, are down here too. So it's just the common sizes for popular planner stickers. Like I said, I have an Erin Condren horizontal. So this is the dimensions I'm going to be working with. To show you guys an example of how to make stickers. So I have cropped this photo to get it more to the appropriate shape. Now I need to size it. Um, of course when you unlock this you're going to be messing with the dimensions of the photo. I cropped it down to where I won't be altering them too much which is why I'm unlocking this because I care more about it being the perfect size for my planner than I do altering the photo a little bit. But I would just note that um, yeah, you can see like what it just did. That's not not what you want to happen, which is why I cropped the photo when I uploaded it into Design Space. So it messes with it a little bit, but like I said, I care a lot more about it being perfect for my planner than I do about the dimensions being perfect. And that still looks great to me. It doesn't look too warped or messed up. So I am going to stick with that 1.5 by 1.63. Yep, I just like to verify my stuff. So I'm going to throw some text on there, um, looks kind of springy, it's springtime, at least it definitely is here in Alabama. So I'm going to 
put some spring card text on there. Um, I'm just going to put the words, hello spring. And I'm going to use this font, the skinny. Yeah, it doesn't, the preview hasn't been working. I've been having a lot of problems with my design space, but this is like a Ray Dunn looking font. If any of you guys like Ray Dunn, I certainly do. So that's what I'm going to use. So after adding the text, it's really important to make sure you come up here to where it says fill and turn it to print. Um, that's because otherwise it would cut it out like we would do on normal vinyl. So now it's not going to cut those letters out exactly. It's going to print it. After you do that, you can change the color. I'm going to do white because I think it's going to look great on our picture. Um, just to note, the picture should already be in print. If it's not, go ahead and do that now. Make sure you upload it as a print image. So now I want to edit the shape and size of the text. I'm going to take... That down a bit. Let's say okay, that is a little smaller than what I wanted. It's a little better. Okay, so I have the word hello. Now I want to add some more text. I'm just going to put hello spring. And for this, Part. I want to use the font, the scripty font I have, it's called Bromello. Um, again, you can't see it on the preview for some reason because I've been having problems. I do want to mention that I get all my fonts at dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. You can install tons of fonts for free and it's just a really awesome thing to use. So I'm going to take the letter space down because I want each letter to be touching. So I think I'm going to usually use negative 0.5 for this. Yes, that's the look I want. Alternatively, you can leave them spaced out if you like. You can also mess with the letter space up here. Or if you want to do it kind of custom, you can ungroup all that text and that'll take it to where each letter is a separate piece and then you can move them how you like on your own. So again we're going to come up here to fill, change it to print, and then I'm going to change the color to white and then mess with the size. Okay, I think when I was messing with this one I wanted the width to be 1.445 that looks not right. Okay, so now, as you can see, it's kind of all over the place. You guys know by now, if you've watched the other videos, that I love that centering button. So right now, I'm going to center those two on each other. And that looks great. And then I'm going to group those two together. And then I'm going to, again, sorry if I didn't mention it, so clicking on the text, clicking Command or Control, and then clicking on the background come up here to align and center. And now it is exactly where we want it. So the next step, which is so important, unless you want hello cut out of your sticker, come up here, um, select everything. Again, you can either click command and click on both. You can do it over here or you can highlight. And then you want to come over here and use this flatten button. So what that does is makes it all one piece. It's only going to cut this outer edge now, which is what you want if you're making this type of sticker. So that's real cute. We'll put that in our planner. Um, another idea I had, oops, not what I wanted to do. So another planner sticker, just kind of going with that, I'll make kind of a plain one. So if you don't want to use an image as a background, you can come in here to shapes insert a square or any shape you want to use for your sticker. I'm going to unlock it and change it to that size from this website, the 1.5 by 1.63 because that's the size or type of planner I have. And then after you size it, very important, come up here to fill, change it to print. So Obviously, we can do any color background we want, throw anything on there. Feel free to do that. I am going to use a pattern. I wanted to show you guys these. They are really cool. Um, 
a great for making stickers in my opinion. So I'm going to kind of stick with this yellow theme Something like that. So we'll see how that looks. Another thing to note is you can edit the pattern. Um, a lot of people don't really know that. So if you click on edit, pa edit pattern, excuse me, you can come over here, click on a pattern. If you want those polka dots to be big, you can make them big. If you want them microscopic, you can do that. Just mess with it, see what you like. Um, note this, uh, yeah, a lot of these, this stuff will appear really low res, but when you pin it out, it actually doesn't look like that. It turns out looking a lot better. So if it looks kind of crazy when you're messing with it, don't worry, it probably is going to pin out normal. So I have my basic shape and background. I decided in playing with this earlier that a wreath looks really cute on top of this, so I'm going to come to upload images. I've already uploaded um, the wreath I want to use. I, for this wreath, I found a free one, a free SVG online a long time ago. I wish I could remember where I found this to show you guys, but I do not. I just really like this one. Okay, see when that happens. So, um, yeah. If you want this wreath, I can try to send you the file, so just DM me or PM me, whatever it's called on Facebook, and let me know. I'll send you that. Another place you can Google free SVG floral wreath. You can go to Etsy and buy a floral wreath. You can come over here to Cricut's Images. Um, they have some great ones if you just type wreath. Obviously, you can see some that I've uploaded, but they have some good ones that would work just the same if you want to do the same kind of design. I think they make really cute stickers. I love floral wreaths. I literally draw them all the time in my little digital software. So, yeah, find what you like if you want to do the same design and then put it on a sticker. I think it makes for a cute sticker when you just throw a wreath on top of a flat background. But that could just be me. So I'm just going to size this. And then same thing as before, I'm highlighting both and centering. And now it's centered on there. And I think, again, that looks really cute. Just as before, I'm going to highlight both again, either by clicking and dragging by pressing control or command, depending on your operating system, or by coming over here. And then again, I want to flatten. So those are just some examples of planner stickers. Um, obviously, there's other types of stickers to be made, so I'll show you a couple more examples. Um, I drew up an SVG. I don't remember which one is the correct file of just a cute quote and I did some hand lettering and doodling that I like that I thought would make for a cute sticker. So um, I, again, like I said, you have to just kind of find inspiration. You can either for, like this is the type of sticker, my sister asked me to print this on a sticker for her to put on her laptop. I think this is a good laptop type sticker or like water bottle sticker. Um, I guess not because it's talking about sweet tea. but. Sometimes to find inspiration for stickers, again, come over here to Unsplash, browse through, see what you like. Um, go to Etsy and search quote SVGs. I do that all the time. Um, I have capabilities to hand letter and put those, make my own SVGs, so I do that often. Another way is to come to Cricut. They really honestly have some good images to make stickers out of. I mean, there's tons of stuff in here that you could make cute stickers with. Like, all this stuff would make for great stickers. So find what you like. Obviously, another option is to type something yourself and create something yourself. So just be creative. Sometimes I go to Pinterest, I find a quote I like, and then I go from there. That's another place I get inspiration from. I always like to try to kind of make stuff mine, so I don't often like buy something from Etsy, but I certainly have bought files from Etsy to make stickers out of. Um, especially if I can't think of anything and I just want a sticker or if somebody's asking me for something specific and I don't have a good design for it. So for this size, um, my sister wanted it, like I said, as a laptop sticker. This is, I guess that's actually kind of a decent size. 
usually try to do the height about four inches for laptop stickers so I will leave that like it is so I'm ready this is um, just some of the stickers I'm gonna print out real quick make sure everything is turned to print that is it doesn't need to be flattened because it's one file go through make sure everything is grouped because that needs to be grouped whoops not that but good thing I said that make sure you group everything and flatten everything that needs to be flattened what in the world don't know how that text got there so everything is flattened it looks good once you're ready you're happy with your design and you want to make some stickers as always you're going to click make it and it's gonna come up like this these black lines are very important that is where Cricut how Cricut knows where to cut so it like will, when we plug it in, you're gonna, it's going to sense these at first. It's going to go through and scan looking for these black lines. And that is its indication of where exactly to make its lines. I will just give you a warning. Sometimes with Cricut, I've had to recalibrate so that it cuts where it's supposed to. Normally it does a great job, but say one out of ten times, it will cut off to the side. Like it would cut this line over here. So if it does that, you just need to calibrate it. Um, Maybe I'll include a tutorial about how to do that as well because it's pretty easy. It's also on Cricut's website, but just a heads up. So, of course, the next thing we're going to do once we're happy with this is click continue. Okay, so real quick before I put them in the printer, I just wanted to show you guys some of the types of um, sticker paper that I use. This is called craft paper. It's brown. You have to work. There's kind of a trick to get around cutting and printing on colored paper, but those turn out really cute. Yes, this is Silhouette brand, but I have not been able to find a clear sticker paper in the Cricut brand. So when I'm doing my clear stickers, I use this. You can kind of see that they print on clear paper, so it's nice if you want a clear background. Here's Cricut printable vinyl. It's not exactly sticker paper. It's just vinyl that can be printed on, um, which I really like. It's a little bit higher quality, but sometimes it doesn't absorb ink as well, but it does make, it, it just depends. Sometimes it makes for a nicer sticker, sometimes not so much. And then this I get from Walmart, um, just a matte white sticker paper. I always find it in like the paper section next to all the regular paper and cardstock and stuff. I think this was seven or eight dollars. This at Hobby Lobby, $9.99. This I think I usually grab from Michaels for like $6.99. And the craft paper, $9.99. And of course, you can always get coupons for that stuff. So right now I'm just gonna show you how to do this on the principal vinyl. It's the same process no matter what you're using though. So this part obviously depends upon your printer. I have an HP um, inkjet printer, just kind of normal. If you're using, if you have a printer like me, I'm using this, um, the Printable Vinyl, the Cricut brand, it says Cricut on the back, you want to load it upside down. So, uh, some printers are like that, some aren't. I'm sure you know what's best for yours. If you don't know, do a test on a piece of paper first, and that way you know which side it's printing on. So, load up your piece of Printable Vinyl or sticker paper the way it needs to be in your computer or the way it needs to be in your printer, and then we'll go from there. So once you've clicked continue, you are going to click the send to printer button. As you can see right here, this is very important, it got super messy and blurry. Unclick this acid bleed button. See how much better that made that? Definitely prettier. So um, find the printer you want to use, and then go ahead and click print. And yep, it should start printing. So once you've printed, the next step is to place your printout on your mat, just like you would anything else. So just in that top left, I'm using one of my older, less sticky mats. It doesn't really matter. It's just, just what I felt like using. That's why this mat looks crazy so smooth it down I don't use my scraper as much to smooth on these just because I don't want to tear off the ink or anything um, so smooth it down just like normal and then we're gonna go ahead and put it into our machines okay so once you print um, come over here to I've already printed 
set your material. Like I said, I'm using that printable vinyl, so I'm gonna turn it to vinyl. I'd probably turn it to vinyl even if I was using the sticker paper. And then as always, load the mat. Once your mat is loaded, the flash and go button is going to flash. Everything's going to look good to go on here. And as always, you're going to hit that Cricut button. Now, like I was saying, it's going to scan these black lines because that's how it knows where to cut. So for a while, it'll say scanning just because it's gonna go find those black lines like it's doing there. So it'll do that for a little bit and then it'll start to cut just like anything else. As always, when it is done, we're going to unload our mat. So it's pretty easy to take off the mat. You just, well, again, I'm sure you guys heard me say this last time, I am working with a really sharp blade right now, so it is cutting plumb through everything. Usually it wouldn't cut through that back piece. Probably should have turned down the setting, but that's okay. So you just rip it right off. Um, just like any normal sticker. Again, usually it would not be this difficult to come off because it would have just stayed on that backing. I left, um, I originally planned to do this post last week, as I'm sure you could guess. I left my planner kind of blank for that week because I wanted to put that sticker on for y'all on the first day of spring. So um, here's that Hello Spring sticker. Here's that other one I guess I could have shown you. They came out really well. So now I'm just gonna take this one off and put it in my planner just for effect. So it's printable vinyl. So again, it's just in really nice quality. I don't know if you can really tell on the camera, but it turned out real good. So I'm gonna try to get it as straight as I can. And that's how it looks. So it turned out great. So that is our March project. I'm sorry if it feels like I rushed through this. It's just, it really is that easy. Sticker making is so easy and fun. And I just really enjoy it. So I hope you guys enjoy it too. I did not put that on my planner, by the way. I don't want you guys to think I'm some kind of crazy person putting a big sticker across it like that. But I did throw those two on there just to give you an example. I'm really happy with all these, how all these came out and I hope you give it a try. Um, feel free to do the exact same things I did or to find your own inspiration. Just make sure you post it in our group. Thanks guys and have a good week.